if you have a really positive experience with it, which is great, I hope that nobody gets side effects from it. I hope that the surgeries were great for everybody all the way across the board. But if you don't experience the negative things that other people experience, like myself, you have a hard time believing that the surgery could cause something so catastrophic. Now you automatically go to, well, it's obviously something you did. It's obviously your fault. It obviously could have no possible connection with the surgery you had. It could be, but it could also be life is full of curveballs. No matter how much you prepare for certain things, sometimes it just doesn't work out. Right. And, and I, I never say 100% that a surgery will cause this or it will cause that. But I do know I didn't have problems before I had the surgery. I do know that all of these things popped up after my anatomy was rearranged. Right. We're on this topic. Do you want to talk about a little bit about malabsorption and, and how that works and what you've been through from that? Yeah, so the malabsorption is when you have a gastric bypass specifically, I, I don't think it affects as much as a sleeve, but I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. So you're, I'm not sure specifically, but I know that a lot of your stomach is cut out to where it's just the size of an egg and your intestines are bypassed to where things just go straight through you right into your bloodstream and your stomach doesn't have a chance to absorb the vitamins and minerals that you normally would. So you have to take a lot of vitamins. Right. I probably take probably 20 vitamins a day. I take calcium four times a day. I take all of my morning vitamins and then I take stuff at night. For the people who are listening, and if you have experience on this, please comment down below and, and share those comments with us. But to add to what you're saying, she has to take well over what she needs to take vitamin wise, because the body's not going to absorb it all. And hopefully she gets just enough, right? Is mm -hmm. that correct? Right. And so when you have the esophagus coming down, when, when it's a bypass, basically they cut that esophagus and they reroute the esophagus to the small intestine, kind of bypassing the stomach. And by doing so, you make this artificial stomach using that, 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 that anatomy, uh, okay. the, the, the esophagus, and your esophagus is not made to absorb the nutrients or the micronutrients, macronutrients of the food. And so you deal with being deficient. And the, not only of, that, you can only eat small amounts at a time, right. which causes even more malabsorption. Right, right. Did you deal with any anything with your hair or no? Um, so I have PCOS which is polycystic ovary syndrome that started when I hit puberty. And that is kind of where you get a lot of cysts in your ovaries and it uh, causes your hormones to be imbalanced. There's a medication called metformin that I just recently got put on by a new doctor that I've seen. But my entire life, like I'm 36 years old, my entire life, even seeing doctors for it, they never put me on anything. So my hormones have always been out of whack. Okay. And so I ha already have like really thin hair. Okay. I already have all of those symptoms that you're already going to get going into the surgery. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't ever really a concern or something that I had noticed for me because I was already experiencing it. Okay. The vitamins you're taking, are they all pill form or are they through liquid? No, they're all pills. Okay. But when I first started out, it was all liquid. Got it. And I'm sure that that's not cheap having to buy the amount of pills you're having to get for right. vitamins, right? Yeah. So that's and also that's... if you really hate taking pills, it's really hard to get things in liquid form and they taste so gross that it just makes you not want to do it. Uh, yeah. Uh, pills can be frustrating. For me, it's not the gross part. For me, it's just the, the regiment of it. And again, I'm not complaining. I'm, I'm very blessed to be in the position to get frustrated over these things. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I don't regret anything. Um, Cause I know that you're going to get the, we, we, we can get those kind of comments because it mm -hmm. can sound that way. TMI, but my big side effect, I guess you could say, is I have problems with being regular. Okay. I take 20 pills of Metamucil daily. I take stool softener three times a day. I, I take Marilax twice a day and about twice a week. I also take milk of magnesia. <laughs> so a lot just to try to be normal and go to the bathroom once a day. Before I got on the metformin this past year, I was on the opposite end and I would go too much. And I had to take 20 pills of the other fiber, the, um, it's the, I was taking the generic citrus cell. Oh yeah. Love. To, to kind of make things harder. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I was in the same boat as you just on the opposite end. Yeah. The cross we bear, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's tough. And another thing is I'm also, I can't drink tap water 
I can't drink unflavored water because I think it's a uh, viscosity thing that I've heard other people talk about with the bypass as well. It, it makes me nauseous, gives me stomach cramps. So mm -hmm. I'm always drinking um, like an electrolyte powder or like Propel Zero or Gatorade Zero that has electrolytes in it, which also before I had started doing that, after I had gastro bypass, I had leg cramps like crazy all day, every day. They never went away, no matter how much water I drank. I've never tried it, but I've heard that if you are experiencing cramps, that you just get some water and literally put some salt in it, mix it and down it. And like in three minutes that it takes the cramp away, never tried it, but cause it sounds nasty, but, yeah. <laughs> but cause I've, I've experienced some really bad like behind my thigh. I don't know what that is. Your quad or whatever. I get some really bad cramps like that, where I've got to, I wake up in the middle of the night and I've got to like walk it off kind mm -hmm. of thing. And that's just terrible, terrible. Yeah, I used to do uh, that every night. You just want to scream, right? Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's like I will literally shoot out of bed and I have to stand up to stretch that muscle out. And, and then and it's the thing is, the you don't want to put the, you don't want to put the pressure, but you have to put the pressure to stretch it out. And it's right. like, it's so painful. Yeah. So you mentioned that a large portion of people that have reached out to you are people that haven't gotten the surgery yet. Right. And they'll come and ask you some questions. And obviously you've already stated this for anyone who's going to leave that comment, just because she had a certain experience. She's not saying that everyone's going to have that certain experience. Right. right. But, I know several people that have had the same surgery and we all have different, a different set of issues afterwards. So what's the most common question that you'll get from someone who hasn't gotten the surgery yet? I don't really get questions as much as I get, oh my gosh, I'm so confused. I don't know what to do anymore. I thought it was going to be roses. And now I've seen you and other people comment on your videos about the things that you've experienced. And I'm just kind of hitting a wall with it. Mm. And so what I tell them is that at the end of the day, you don't know if you're going to get anything and you don't know what you're going to get. You could get nothing. You could get one side effect. You could get all the side effects. But you have to be confident in your choice at the end of the day. You have to be okay knowing that it's possible that you do have side effects afterward. And you have to go into it thinking that you're going to deal with whatever comes no matter what it is. And if you can't get to that point, then probably shouldn't get the surgery. Right. If you could go back to 2015, would you still do the surgery? I would get the sleeve. I would never, I would never suggest a bypass because just based off of my experiences it's funny i think like in 2015 and the place that i was at in my marriage and life it was my only choice i didn't know then about exercising and weightlifting and nutrition what i know now so that person back then that was their only way out if i knew then what i know now i wouldn't have done it at all mm. but for the person that i was i wish i would have gotten sleep hindsight yeah. is uh impossible but you can't get caught up in that right i mean because right. we can't play that game it's not helpful is there any side effects we didn't talk about <laughs> yeah so i have a few i have so i'm borderline anemic to where my doctor gave me two blood transfusions that didn't do anything for me and i Holy also moly. take i also take um, um, iron supplements every single day. So it's like my body just doesn't want to absorb anything. But then at the same time, they flush me with all this new iron, but it doesn't want to take that either. So I have that. I have hypoglycemia. So if I don't eat enough, if I wait too long between meals, my blood sugar drops really low to where I almost pass out. So if I don't stay on top of that, it's really really bad. Um, what else? I take my calcium four times a day. And between um, having my son and being pregnant, and the malabsorption, I had to get all of my teeth removed about three months ago in November. I went through the, the whole process of it. So I have no teeth, which is greatly influenced from the malabsorption because I noticed I didn't have any problems before I had surgery, but about a year and a half afterwards, I started seeing the, the decline of it. For the bone structure. For just the appearance of my teeth. Like they just started decaying. They okay. started, my gums started receding. They started cracking, breaking off, like the whole thing. And that was a big taboo subject in a Facebook world is correlating bad teeth and lack of calcium in that area with the gastric bypass even so though what do you what do you mean like taboo like people would attack you for yeah. for for asking questions about it if anybody else is experiencing the same thing so i made a video about it on my channel it was a catchy subject it said gastric bypass ruined my teeth but in yeah, the video that's a huge video you have yeah yeah so in the video i said gastric bypass and pregnancy both combined because people who don't have the surgery who have pregnancies also experience decline in their oral in their oral hygiene and their teeth because you're you're giving a lot of your calcium to your baby 
when it's in your stomach to help it grow. I'm showing them right now that video. Can you see my screen? Yeah. So this video right here, I don't want you to copyright me, so I won't play it. <laughs> but it's this video right here. Um, that's a great thumbnail in the sense of it's very impactful, right? Right. So I got, I got crucified on Facebook by a lot of people over the whole subject. And the, the funny thing to me is that if I were the only person experiencing this, then yeah, you could say maybe it's genetic. Maybe you didn't brush your teeth three times a day. Sure. But there's so many people that responded to that video and the Facebook posts that I put in all the different groups that are experiencing the exact same thing. So if it's one person, sure, it could be self error. But if you have countless people who are saying the exact same thing as me, there's got to be some truth to it. Right. So the anemia, does that make you also lightheaded as well? Or? No, not as much. I just get I'm cold all the time. And I'm very tired all the time. I also feel some of that, like the temperature changes, like I feel cold a lot more mm -hmm. than I did before. I've never really looked into it. I just thought I have less insulation. I just thought right. that that's stupid. And I just dealt with it, put an extra extra layer on other than feeling cold all the time. Is there any, is there anything more to it? Um, I mean, for me, it's just being cold, being tired and I have bruises all over. I bruise very easily. That's a result of the anemia. Right. And then the iron, that's also a result of the anemia, right? Because if your blood is thin, it's lacking right. in well, iron. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I don't know most of this, but maybe some of the people watching also don't know. So, right. um, <laughs> so anemia, low in iron, low in calcium, you had to get your, 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 all, all your teeth taken out and redone. Yep. Wow. There's more. Uh, it's just, there's so much that I can't bring it all in <laughs> at, at once. Uh, what, what, what else? Uh, the hypoglycemia, the low blood hypoglycemia, sugar. Hypoglycemia, low, yep. low blood sugar. Yeah, that is a lot. And you always seem to have such a positive attitude.